Edgeworth, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can wow. you hear me? Yeah, at last. Yeah, you've been uh, you've been on my radar for so long, and now we, <laughs> now we finally meet. Nice to meet you. I'll just uh, I'll try and get an angle on the camera so we can okay. get a good look at your work. Can you see? Can you see them? I can. I've just uh, I'll just show you something. Ten minutes ago, I've just received some clay. So I started sculpting a, a horse. Oh, very nice. So that's um, uh, uh, my, um, I know I'm talking about myself here, I'm supposed to be talking about you, but um, my ex-wife Shelley has a, a daughter called Freya, who I see quite a lot of. And oh. we're, we're walking in the woods and they had a, a class going, just people sat in a field making pots. And so Freya made that one I saw them. I saw them on uh, on Instagram. Oh right, yeah. I didn't. I didn't actually confess that this one isn't actually me. That's Freya. But the other three were, were the three of us just sat down and just started sticking our thumbs in clay. Oh, very. Okay. And and and, it, and so I ordered some, and it literally just arrived maybe twenty minutes ago. So. So so I know nothing about clay ceramics. Do you is something you're going to fire them or? Are you gonna paint them? You can air dry them. The, the, these air dry, the air dry mm -hmm. clay. Um, I spoke because I saw Billy's done quite a lot. Uh, Billy's mum actually. Um, she she was a very good potter. Billy childish. Childish. Um, yeah. His mum was a very good potter. Mm. So I told mm -hmm. him, and she made these sculptures that looked like um, sort of totem poles, but a lot shorter. But that that kind of thing. And uh, he, he, he gave me a few tips on, like, he said I should glaze them. And, and well, I think he basically just said that. Um, right. But, yeah, so, but I'm just making what they call pinch pots, where you just stick your yeah. thumb in, sculpt it around your thumb, and, um, and try uh, to make something. Yeah, I have a friend who does, who does that now and actually spends a lot of time doing that. He lives in Texas, and he made some beautiful, you know, pinch pots that just they were, looked like they were... Sometimes some of them done on a machine, but some of them very rough and and, and nice. And he, he he glazed them up and added a lot of little detail with fine knife and stuff like that. Where do you walk in the woods in London? Where do you find a woods? Highgate Woods. Mm, okay. I'm just gonna set something off my phone because um, sure. Just in case this doesn't work, I'm gonna record the audio. So if this, so I take I, your time. Take your time. I did a. Uh, Oh, hang on a minute. I've got my, this phone is so complicated. Check, check, check. Yeah. Um, Highgate Woods in North London. It's it's near where Karl Marx is buried. Mm -hmm. they've, they've got um, a, a woods there that is very. It's got very very good clay, um, which is quite strange around here. And it also in about 100, 150 AD had a stream running through the woods. Yeah. So when the Romans got there, they couldn't believe what they found. They, they just, so they built a kiln, they, they set up there, and uh, there's so many pots that are 2,000 years old, fragments of them, that you can go anywhere in Highgate Woods and just dig Crazy. five feet. Yeah, and, and you'll, you'll be pulling out thousand year old ar archaeology. Um, right. it, was a, it was a major center for pottery around, like I say, 2,000 years ago. Um, I thought when you first said you were you got some clay in, in, in the woods that there were people using clay and they let you have some. That's how I imagined it. I oh, sorry, that's, that actually... is what happened. Oh, oh okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that, we were walking through the woods, yeah, and like they, they'd set up a table and they're, they're some local society of historians. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. they, were, they were trying to interest people to go on a guided tour, which um, Freya and myself went on. Um, we were the only people there below... 65 years old so we just went around they showed us and then i had that i had that happen a lot last week or two uh how old's freya seven mm, nice seven so. i love that age i have two daughters and so i had seven year olds around me and i miss it very very artist i think i think um 
she's always like drawing, but now she's uh, got a bit more independence at seven. She, she realises that she's got this mood of exploration. And so she wants to just do anything I'm doing. It, it, whatever I'm doing, she's like, oh, can I come? You know, like if I'm going to buy some food, oh, can I come? Yeah, so yeah. Okay. That, that's the mindset I think of maybe seven years old, which I, I imagine you might have had the same with your daughter. Oh, yeah. They... Oh, well, yeah, they were around me constantly. I, I homeschooled both both uh, daughters until until high school. Uh, one middle school, I don't know how it is in the UK, but we have elementary, middle, and high. And the middle school is middle school's like you go in at 12 and 13, and high school you go in about 15. You know, so that's that middle time. But one of the daughters I, I uh, schooled until then, and the other one I waited till uh, high school. And they're both art lovers. And one of them is an art administrator in a, in a school right now. And the other one's still in college. Constantly yeah. sketching, constantly drawing. An amazing, an amazing drawer, renderer. Mm. Uh, and so they've inherited that from, from you, do you reckon, or about Rose as well? Rose uh, graduated from college with a... Uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and Rose is by far, by far, intuitively gifted. And she, she has, she could do anything. She could draw that, draw that horse. It'll, mm. She'll draw a horse. Uh, but her, her, her profession is graphic design mostly right now. That's what she does. Yeah. And because uh, it pays the bills. But she's, a, she's could have been a great, great artist if she wanted to be. Uh, so she's got it in her blood. The other daughter was from another, another mother. Who is also an artist, and she's an art teacher too. So, so it's it's just all around us. Yeah, uh, it's it's, uh, it's unavoidable. Yeah, I I found that with Shelley because um, when I when I first met Shelley, she was studying business, and I was supposedly the arty one, and then I we would be playing I'd be playing music, and she would just start singing. And I'm like, hang, you're you're better than me. And then and then <laughs> and then we'd start drawing. And I'm like, hang, you're better than me. <laughs> and the roles kind of, uh, well, then what am I then? If she's if she's the the business mind and the art mind, I'm sort of like this redundant thing that's hanging around her. Well, um, that's my world. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it was a bit emasculating at first, but then one, once you think, well, okay, now now I've got to get more aggressive with what I'm doing, and it's this competitive thing between. I felt. Because Shelley was so naturally gifted, yes. I, I thought I, I need to kind of compete with her. It was kind of quite a not a very harmonious feeling at first, but then once we started collaborating, especially with the music, then then you kind of get the benefit of all that energy, and we did. That's what we're and I'm doing that with Rose right now. That collaboration with music, it's just yeah, not not as. Uh, now how I would like to be doing that with writing our own stuff, but right now it's just getting involved with covers and things like that. It's, it's fun, but that's very interesting. A lot of similarities. Mm. Well, um, we've gone, we've, we've gone back to doing covers. We started off doing, actually I've started playing with Emma. You probably know that. Yeah. And um, we started off just doing all originals. Hi, are you there? So what's... I've got your work on the wall, uh, the second part of your show. I just put it up maybe half an hour, an hour ago. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, because I, I just thought, well, just see see what you're doing, just find out a little bit more about it. You've got some things online already um, where, where you introduce yourself and your artwork. <laughs> um, so just something like that, just to talk about whatever you feel like talking about. Um, I can't possibly compete with Emma, who talked very well and about many things but she 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 i i i read some of the books she reads so that was kind of exciting to see somebody you know an ocean away who's who was, and i actually was she said mentioned like noam chomsky or something and i literally was reading a book that week by him so it's, it's neat to see comparisons and the music comparison with other stuckists is is, is interesting because you were mentioning with shelly uh, your ex-wife, yeah, and how music was a was a a binder. There's one thing I noticed about stuckism: a lot of people are into uh, instruments, music, playing, uh, expression. Yeah. With painting and music, and I know Paul Harvey actually did a dissertation on that mm. um, for PhD, I think, and uh, about stuckism and 
and uh, punk music, punk rock. Yeah, yeah. And I, I read that, and I was like, wow, yeah, I totally get that feeling. I have many friends, uh, not many, a couple who would know this sort of thing, who say, uh, you know, what I do is very punk. And I yeah. go, well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, that sounds great. I, I, don't, I don't feel punk, but I, it, it's an honor. <laughs> That's it. I, th I think I think it's even even though I'm not. There are a couple of punk bands I like, but not really very much. But ju just the the spirit of of um, just picking something up and just and doing it. You know, you got the urge to do it. You pick up a stick with some paint. You do a painting. You pick up a guitar. You start you start doing it, and then I start start with sculpting. I don't know how to sculpt, but it's like that that idea. I think with a lot of artists where. It's almost like as soon as you're ready to do it, you will start making good work. There, there's no, there's no step. Step one is to train. Step two is this. It's, it's just I want to. I've got this feeling I want to do this, and it's going to happen, and it's happening now. Um, so I guess that's where the kind of punk comparison comes in, where it might look like it's untrained or something, but it, it, it's, it's, it's just this immediate, immediate creation, and, and, mm -hmm. and the value in that. And that, that's my number one barrier in trying new uh, mediums is a uh, fear of, of, I don't know, failure or long learning process. So when I watched you and Charles and Emma doing uh, Black Ivory, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that was just saying I would love to participate in that, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's a long walk to your house, you know, yeah. and, and walk the water, you know, but um, we have that here. I have a, a friend who's two friends that are uh, accomplished printmakers, you know, and mm. in, in all in all sorts of types of print, you know. Yeah. And I know so little about it that I'm a, I actually went to one of their workshops and it was just I had a horrible experience because I just could not, you know, the, how I was applying color and mm. just you know big smudge through the press, you know, it was it was a monotype. Yeah. And uh, or, or oh, well, it went through it went through the press once. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and I said ah. Uh, this isn't for me, but when I watched you guys do it, I said, "But you know, Charles can Charles seems to be handling this well. I can mm. do this too." So that's down the road. Um, yeah. And sculpture, probably. I have a, a another local friend. This is our little town here. You'd be surprised how how full of art it really is. I mean, with and people practicing stuckism, you know. But in this situation, sculpture. Mm. Uh, he does. I love what he does. He drives out to Massachusetts, which has. Um, many marble quarries and he just gets the the stuff they throw into the ravines and pulls out these you know 100 pound or 200 pound rocks with help and throws them in his car and and comes home and, and turns on the all his machinery and he makes some beautiful stuff i'll i put up a, a piece uh on instagram a couple days ago that he just dropped off in my house mm. um check out my feed later yeah uh, and he made that out of uh, serpentine, serpentine, serpentine. Mm. Um, and I, he, he got it somewhere else in the country because he travels a lot. Yeah. Um, but I look at that as like a, a form of uh, stuckism too and, and punk and because he has no training, but he's definitely ready. And, and for 10 years, he's just been putting out this great stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, ama it's amazing how it could just feel really good. Like make, when I make stuff, I just feel that it's really good, even though I know... That the, the technique isn't there. Um, on my first painting, I just thought this is amazing. So it, it there, there's, and in fact, I always say to what Van Gogh said, anything done with love is done well. And yeah. if you've got, sometimes the, the technique can maybe disguise that. So you might have a quite of an, uh, we might have a sort of unfair advantage in a way that there's there's not a lot we've got to fight past or unlearn in in a right. way to. to to just sort of say something, oh, look, like I've done a horse, and hopefully somebody will see that horse and think, well, that's think what I think of it. Just this, you make it and it feels finished, and mm -hmm. and and ready. Um, there's a there's a guy who lives in Massachusetts. You know, uh, you know the band Pixies. Um, oh, of course, uh, Black Francis, but uh, Charles Thompson. That's yeah. right. He, the other Charles Thompson. He, I think, he puts his paints. He started putting them in the oven or something. And he started looking, instead of like going for linseed oil, he would just try these other th quite industrial materials. And um, I, I don't, I, I think he just wanted, he thought, well, I, I've got paint, I've got all this stuff, what can I make out of all this stuff? So he's kind of setting his own learning. Le learning he put his paintings in an oven? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 
I don't know why, but he, the materials he uses, like he, he had some old blind across a window. I thought, well, I'll paint on that. So he goes out and goes, well, what shall I use as a painting medium? And he wouldn't just go to the art store. He would maybe look at other, other things you could mix with a pigment and what you could do to that to, to make something. And, um, <laughs> and very much like with Charles, uh, the other Charles Thompson, the English Charles Thompson, when he came here, I mean, I had a mangled press that he could have used if he wanted to, but he, he thought, well, no, I, I don't know. I'm just going to see what I can do with oil paint. And uh, he just squeezed out lots of oil paint and merged the colours and then put paper on top. And he'd done all these, all these bits of paper were coming off that were, I guess, what he would consider maybe failed attempts. But eventually he just came up with, with, with some process that I tried to copy and couldn't. But again, it was just born, born like out of the mouth of babes, that, that kind yeah. of thing. It, ju it just yeah. comes up. Um, yeah. And it, you get fantastic results. Um, yeah. What's that you're working on? They look quite accomplished hills and mountains, that painting. This? Yeah. Oh, can I pick it up a little bit or no? Yeah. yeah. Can you see this? Yes. Oh, I, it's, 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 oh. it's yesterday. I began a painting yesterday. It's a, it's a big one. So it's actually... Rose and me in bed with the landscape in back. You see it? I can see Rose in the landscape. I can't see you. See the, the see that guy with his mouth open and the eyes wide open? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is just sketching out a painting that I want to finish in a couple few days. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens. It's uh, it's a what I lack of funds has made me start un, um, undressing a lot of old paintings that I that I uh, put up on stretchers. Yeah, and uh, rolling them up, uh, you know, like you know, like big, you know, paintings. You know, and roll them up and, and store them. Yeah, and uh, to, because wood's very expensive right now in the United States, so I can't go making my own. Mm. I mean, really crazy. It's it's gone up because of uh, the I don't know, COVID and trade. Yeah. So so, I've, uh, and nobody's buying any of them, right? So, right. <laughs> so you just just unroll them and hide them hide them away. Yeah. And the canvas is, is affordable, so for, you know, you get eight feet of canvas, it's only, I don't know how, how this converts to uh, pounds, but it's uh, 40 bucks or something. So, so this big, yeah. yeah, and uh, and I have a show coming up in, in Oswego here. It's a fundraiser for the Art Association, so everything I make in the show is going to be for, uh, for sale for fundraising. I'm not going to take any money mm. from it. I'm trying to get more involved with people instead of hiding out in the, <laughs> in the basement yeah. studio <laughs> and uh, promote something else outside myself. Yeah, you know, try something. Yeah, something. Because I'm not getting rich at this, so I might as well help somebody else get rich. <laughs> and you never know. I mean, the more, the more restrictions we come under, I think I think the better results sometimes you get. When I actually, when I threw out my mangle press, I started. I, I realised I was actually better off without it, and um, we've got a cost of living crisis here in, in in England. I don't think it'll be long actually for the pounds and the dollar. It, it, it would effectively be the same amount of money that the way things right. are going. Yeah, um, definitely the euro. It's it's all going down, and um, energy bills are, are just. I mean, you've got local pubs here, which their their energy bill was. Instead of being five thousand, is like forty-five thousand or so, something like that. So we no no one's got any money, and, and no one's spending anything. Um, so mm -hmm. we're, we're we're finding call it better ways. It, it's all, almost like um, the Beatles were calling Sergeant Pepper on a four-track. You know, the, the more the more restrictions you get, the the better the results. So right, right. So uh, this, I just popped into my head from the from the Kinks. Uh, Art takes time. Time is money. Money scarce, and that ain't funny. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they had there's there's a little band that did something with nothing, and I think they are they from Muswell Muswell they Hill. They are. They're from. They're from. They they are. They're credited with inventing heavy metal. That distortion, da, 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 that distorted mm -hmm. guitar, which I think they've been credited with, and apparently they came up with it. Um, I'd guess five minute walk from here. It's, it's basically two roads down. Ah. Um, and I think the singer from the Kinks did move, I think, maybe to California. Um, yeah.
but then he didn't some weeks he's he's a mus he's a muswell hillian i mean he he lived in muswell he didn't even go 10 miles away and then the house he sold came back on the market so he bought it back and just moved back into his old house again uh, oh right now he's there right he's, now? yeah he's, he still lives there now um i think the album i was listening to yesterday was uh, uh it had a song called muswell hillbilly yeah that's yeah that's funny. Uh, <laughs> that was funny yeah Oh, so he's he's um a lot. Most people I know have seen him walking around. I've I've never. I'm probably the only person in Muscle Hill who's never seen him. Because um, <laughs> ever, ever I saw I saw Ray Davis walking down the street, and I, I've I've never seen him. But um, he's a, he's around. They, we when we get older, our, our faces change, and, and we don't think they do, but they do. So you just might not have noticed them. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you're still looking at the 1965 Ray Davies picture. Yeah, I'm expecting to have a guitar strap round him or something like that. <laughs> right, right, but, uh, right. but no. So you, you, I get the impression you, you're quite prolific, uh, Ron. Would that be fair to say? Uh, I, I paint every day that I'm not painting. So, I mean, really, honestly, five days a week, I'm absolutely painting five days a week. Uh, so, there, I mean, there's times it's six, sometimes it's seven, but it's always fine <laughs> so, uh and i think i'm prolific and there's a lot of reasons why i would you would call me prolific is because i'm naive i think i'm I, i'm a naive painter and i like that because i don't have official training and i don't feel that i'm uh ever blocked by i do feel blocked by rendering uh because there's people that i'm just and i i mentioned this on that video i made about how the internet has made me look at all the world's champions that much more. So if anything, I think being prolific this is only, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling, but I'm prolific because I want to make a painting a day. That's, that's, that's my goal pretty much. And it, whether it's a small one or a big one, obviously this big one is going to take a few days, but uh, so I try to keep myself for economy and other reasons within a 16 by 20 inch, you know, 18 by 24, 12 by 16 is the one you have there. Um, and I like day paintings and I think of them, and it's funny because I've always thought all these, I've heard the word study, like people do studies, you know, artists say, and I'm realizing that probably 95% of my work is are studies that of other paintings, bigger paintings I never do. So I, th which means practice. So I think I'm just constantly practicing. No masterpieces, a lot of practices. <laughs> <laughs> the stu the studies always look I mean even um do you know the painter Constable? He's an old old English painter from hundreds of years ago. I think okay, he, he lived out in the countryside. I, I went to a show of his where they had the study next to the painting and the study would it wouldn't be a, a sketch, it would be a, a, a full on painting, but one he did uh, maybe in twenty five percent of the time and that would be the study. In every single painting, I thought the study was much better than the finished painting. Um, wow! And, yeah. and, and I, I think this it might be to do with just the energy of doing it, and then and then that energy is kind of expelled, and then you go to the more rational side of your brain when you actually start doing the painting, which can never recapture um, the, the the initial kind of blur you know that that expulsion I, 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 he he just they they look more like um il illustrative forgeries yes. they look like forgeries very much get what you're saying i because that's how i feel i'm not definitely i'm not a good judge of other art um as, like what you just mentioned about noticing somebody's feeling and expression that i do notice i do i look for that but uh it, well that's just what i look for probably because though they mirror my limitations. So I think we all like to look in the mirror, you know, so it's like, so it's, that's, I like to see other people doing things that I think it sounds horribly cowardish and cowardly, but you know, that I could do, you know, because <laughs> it makes me feel like there's more out there like me because there's, there's so many world's champions. There's so, so many, I mean, Instagram kills me. It really does. Cause I look at some amazing, work on many levels and uh it, it might not hit that that slapdash energy expression that i look for but i think that hampers me because then i start to think well i could i do that you know can i can i make that i don't know 
Turner landscape or something, you know, <laughs> that these people are able to make, you know, and the answer is always no. So, so then I, I'll, you know, hide out and come down here and try to stay away from the internet and, uh, and uh, just do what I got to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds, sounds like a, the mindset of a maker. So like I, I, I'm, I'm very much the same. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not a massive fan of anything, e even like Picasso, Jimi Hendrix, people who I would say the creme de la creme. I think right. they're amazing, but I'm a maker. And I think maybe I, I identified what you just said there. I'm always just relating it back to myself and my work and how I could use that for my, and I think I've just accepted that that's who I am. I'm not, I'm not, all, I'm not in the audience. I'm not interested. I'm, I want to be the doer. And I think yes. there's you, there's uh, myself, there's a lot of people I know that then they, they'll talk in very high regard about a lot of other people. But I think deep down, they, they're not really that interested because they, they, they've got to do your own stuff. I mean, I'm too busy to be in awe of anyone. I've got to get on with my own work. And yeah. I, I think that's a very healthy, I wouldn't call it in any way cowardly. I, I think it's a very healthy mindset oh, for you to have. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I actually, I'm just, maybe I'm just trying a little forced humility, you know, humbleness, but uh, no, I, I do think that that's, what keeps me going is constantly t uh, testing myself constantly just it's it's about watching what i'm doing that might is it narcissism it, i guess it would be narcissism if it was successful <laughs> you know if I, if I got some dates you know <laughs> but i'm not getting any dates so uh, maybe more like a a, a, fool, a fool's errand but i but it's i'm very fortunate in the place i'm at because rose supports this otherwise i'd be screwed yeah <laughs> excuse me but, um I'd be, i would never be able to put out uh you know work in in any form i also like to write you know so the t and that takes time you're a writer it, it takes time everything is time so without time i could never support myself doing this so i'm one of the uh, i'm very fortunate privileged in that regard me too i'm, I'm i live in my, what was my parents house and okay. and it like I say, the the need to commercialize what you're doing would, in in a in a sense, destroy it. So to na navigate your life, I mean, in a dark way, it kind of broke. That's really what I'd say broke up my marriage was because it it really was one or the other. And fortunately, I mean, I hate to say it because divorce is never good, but I think Shelley and I ended up in a, a good place where it would just would not have been possible had we carried on with the need to support ourselves and you know she wanted to have a child so i'd have been obviously materialistically responsible and and so that that just wouldn't have worked um so yeah i mean you, you're you're you've got a wife who are, seems to be a real savior for, for you right well and, and i'm gonna to i'm gonna to my horn and this is because i mentioned earlier how i homeschooled the kids do, do, do you have homeschooling and um in the UK, yeah. So here, a lot of it, a lot of it's uh, connected to, uh, unfortunately, or well, fortunately, to a born again Christianity, which is like a uh, that's not that was never my take in it. You know, for goodness' sake, I'm reading Noam Chomsky. You know, it's like the Christians would kill him. <laughs> but, but it was always about education being really important. Uh, my grandfather left us money to be educated, and it's just been in the family to. Because it was the only way out of the working class here in America is to, to just to be able to get that desk job would have been important for a lot of people. If you don't have creative means or the bravery or whatever you need to have. But what I'm saying is I, I gave a lot of my time in the, in the girl's life. So I freed up Rose to have a career. So, yeah, so it worked out because she really likes her, her career. It's not it's not drudgery for her. So she's it's a very creative job she has. She's uh, so she markets a college you know so she does all the you know uh, visual stuff she's a photographer she's very getting to be very creative all the time and get paid <laughs> so so once the girls once i always kept to my practice at night and then when they are grow grew up and uh once have i have i'm a grandfather so there's children there and the other one's in college now i have for the past 10 years i've had a lot of time to to paint and and I used to always, I used to be a line cook in the evenings. That's what I did to, to be the, to be the man, 
you know, to, to, I have to make money, but Rose just kept making more money and it got stupid. You know, it's like we're I'm working nights, you're working days. We're trying to, you know, raise these daughters. So I, we both agree that, you know, be an artist, you know, be creative, you know, publish your books, make paintings. And and uh, and so we I got very lucky uh, and, and so did she. So, you know, so it's, it's not a, it's not a take thing going on. So so that's good. It's, Nice. And uh, now, now you're in this sort of time of your life, I guess, where you might have a bit more freedom now your children are older. Uh, you're, you're filling that really with, with art. And to what extent writing as well? To what extent? Uh, I, well, I probably put out a, a, a book a year. So and, and usually it's the way I write is kind of like how I paint. I, I have a a feeling it could be it could be anything whatever and I'll, I'll make an essay you know so in some fashion and, and sometimes I'll, I'll blog it put it up online and then tweak it and, and compile the essays I did in a year and and uh, print them because we have a very you know super easy vanity press that's print on demand where you get this beautiful perfect bound book for two dollars you know 300 pages and then you sell it however you want you know so that's and you don't need to buy more than one the it's so, so it's a great way to to have that uh legacy for yourself family anybody that cares to open up your books when you're dead you know <laughs> so it's a good way to to uh, you as a printer could probably appreciate it. it's 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 just nice even though it's you know factory made it's there you know How, so uh, so they're, yeah. they're prepared to do one book for a few dollars it's through it's it's a company called amazon uh kindle direct publishing and I, I know it's massive corporate, and uh, but it's awesome because it's. I put out books two dollars and fifty cents and author copies. I can get a hundred. I can get two, and sell them how I want to sell them. So, you know, it's, a, it's very very nice deal. No, there, there there are a lot of benefits to to the Amazon like blue chip, like uh, yeah. m multinationals. I mean, <laughs> they're they're a good tool. Um, <laughs> But no, darn. Yeah. So this feeling like you want to do a painting a day. I don't know if it's the same as me, but I I don't like going to bed unless I've done something. You yes. know what I mean? I feel you. I need to create. It's, it's really weird. It could be. It could be a fine. Oh, uh, a, a fine meal. I love to cook because, like I said, I was a cook for many years. So it could turn into Rose's dinner. You know, when she comes home. Uh, but it's got to be something. And I know you have that. I you have that. Let me let me you know make your head a little bigger this afternoon or evening, whatever it is for you. Is you're one of the few out there that really really <laughs> creates it all the time. That energy is insane. Yeah, I don't come close to that. <laughs> I've got only because I've surrounded myself with people who keep on prodding me. I mean, like every, every Monday I go to Billy's, so that's Monday oh. done. I've got no choice. I have to paint all day Monday, or, or at least for a few hours. And then I think, well, Billy always says, so, Edgeworth, what have you been doing all week? So <laughs> and I've got to report back. <laughs> so I've got that there's pressure. A, there's a song, Andy Warhol, by Lou Reed. And uh, it's, it's, it was a hom homage to Andy Warhol. Let me see if I can get the quote right. Uh, basically, he's asking Lou Reed when they're young, you know, how, how, how many songs did you write today? And Lou Reed wrote zero, but he told him 10. And Andy Warhol says, uh, 10, uh, you're not going to be young forever. You should have wrote 15. So it's that, that, that pressure, even though Lou Reed say, I didn't write anything today. <laughs> he lied. So maybe you can lie to Billy. <laughs> it might be good if I lied, because then I'd go home so scared I'd get caught out. I would, I would write 10 songs. You know I mean? <laughs> I, I've told him I've done it. Um, the, the band Oasis, do you, do you know them? They're, they're yeah, no, I'm sorry. I know, I'm very, yeah, okay. No, uh, Noel Gallagher was the songwriter, and they're talking to this guy from a record label. And uh, he just wanted to get the band signed to this big record label. So he said, yeah, like, we've got the album, we're ready to go. We've got, and it's complete lies. And then he's on, he's on the bus on the way home. He goes, I've got to write an album now. Cause I, I, <laughs> and it's the, probably the best, the best lie. I mean, lying's 
maybe sometimes underrated, but if you big, if you big yourself up with the lie, now you've yep. got to go and do it. And yeah. it would be a great incentive, that fear uh, of being yeah. found out. Absolutely. So, so it keeps you going and because you're true to yourself. And you, you, you're gonna, you might lie, but you're going to, like you said, come back and write those 10 songs. And Emma comes here every Thursday. Um, and I imagine maybe, is that, do you reckon maybe why you gravitate towards the, the kind of idea of a community for, for motivation? Mm -hmm. So it effectively ends up being productive. Uh, just just last night, I dedicated a year of my life to the local art association. I'm going to volunteer 32 hours of my time as a, a, a resident artist slash administrator there uh, because they are only open on the weekends. And I'm going to try to bring all this music and, you know, uh, poetry and writing also into this visual art center that's there. And uh, um, but they're letting me have the place to to paint. So like you go to Billy's, I'm now going to be going over to this, uh, you know, it's right a couple miles away and uh, take myself out of here in the winter, which is <laughs> really lonesome and then maybe actually talk to people. <laughs> I think so. I mean, and we, we, Emma and I did a show. Actually, I think Charles was, no, he wasn't actually. It was just Emma and I. We did a show um, in a place called Archway, which is about a, a 20 minute walk from here. And uh, it was a printing studio. They said, you can do what you want. And they said, oh, you can play music. And, and we we didn't in the end, but we were invited to play music there. And it's, it's just once you get people together, they just want they just want to see stuff that's interesting and inspiring. And, and I'm sure if I'm, sh I'm sure if you go down to a visual art place with something else of that ilk, whether it's music or whether it's writing, I mean, it, it 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 all sort of is combustible to each other, you know. It just keeps going and going. It's get, it'll get the ball rolling, and uh, that's it's. You know, COVID really crushed a lot of little organizations. I know you went to Spain recently. Do you ever come over to the UK? Is it? Uh, no, but I want to. I uh, I like. Uh, I'm interested in um, genealogy only because I had a great grandfather during the Depression who did a lot of work and put, gave us a lot of leads. So I don't do the Ancestry.com sort of thing. I just uh, I just do it from his leads, and I like to find things out for myself. And we're all from um, on my father's side. We're all from uh, Nottinghamshire up, yeah. up there, a uh, little town called uh, uh, Sutton Cum, Cum Laude. Cum Laude. Okay. And there's a churchyard there near Scrooby, hmm. and uh, and a bunch of troops are buried there. So I've always wanted to just get out and you know get in, get to London and then take the train up there and, you know, Sheffield, is it? I don't know. Sheffield, don't know. yeah. That, that's the and, uh, yeah. and I've always said to my always meaning in the past few years, several years since I've been into stuckism, I will be stopping to see the English stuckists, you know. Mm. So so you, you're going to have a knock on your door someday soon. Good. <laughs> I think uh, Mark D lives in Nottingham. Um, mm -hmm. So he'd be near yeah. you there. But... Um, I suppose I should ask you just some generic questions. Um, sure. I mean, I, I guess the, the first, the first would be, uh, how did you come across stuckism, and and what what do you like about it? Um, a a roving stuckist who doesn't would not call himself a stuckist. Uh, Dan Leo is a friend here from Texas, and he moved up here. And his wife was teaching at the college, and he followed her along. And he's an he's some of those people who are artists through and through, like how I consider you are, and uh, is just constantly creating and, and, and just looks at the world very with a very bright eye. He you know, just has a lot of energy and happiness. And uh, he told me about stuckism in 2013, 2012. He says, you got to check out, he sent me a video. And it was an exhibition somewhere in London that was going on. It was a stuckist exhibition, and for somehow they mentioned the right words, you know, in the video about, you know, you'd like, it was the manifesto, and then I went right to the manifesto and fell in love with that. Uh, it just, and pretty much now every show I, I, I create or go to, I, you know, talk about stuckism, you know, if I, if I have an artist talk or if there's people ask. Um, I just was in a, um, I'll get right back to how I've heard about it, but I was just in an academic paper with the title, um, about stuckism and um, what do you call it when you put your phone up to a painting and it and it tells you about it or it does something weird to the painting? 
I don't know. Uh, I've never seen oh, that. It's called the alt alternate reality sort of thing. Uh, uh, well, anyway, it was a it was an academic paper that my friend over here at the college, who was a, a professor of um, computers and human interaction, and uh, he used stuckism um, to explain what he's doing. Whatever. Anyway, but so Dan Leo Top, my friend from Texas, told me about stuckism. A year later, I had a show called Just Another Stuckist in Oswego, you know, we're, we're the town I, I live in, and uh, and did the, like you, I did all the video for it, and Rose gave a, a speech for me, we had, you know, filled up the house, 30, 40 people, and, and I had all my paintings on the wall, and, and that was, that was it, I was, I was caught smitten right after that, and I've had home shows two a year at least, uh, except for some reason, well, obviously, the height of COVID, I didn't, oh, I did, I did, I did it. Remotely in video, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and I swear by it. Uh, eliminate that middleman, not because you know you don't like them, but when they're ready to come around, they'll they'll come around. Mm. But right now, I think it's too awash in um, artifice, and uh, in in the, in America anyway, or in the United States, there's a uh, I'm witnessing it firsthand because my daughter's in a very uh, elite college, and uh, and you see how. The galleries become messed up. They, they graduate these young people who are told this is what's art. And I'm amazed that the young folks that are starting to get power with Instagram aren't and are interested in you know showing art and finding new talent. You know, people mm -hmm. out there, and they they have a free platform aren't doing it. And I think that's because of the indoctrination we have in our universities that is really strong. Yeah. So. So you're not going to find new art. You're going to see a lot more, you know, you know, the tape shows Rauschenberg, you know, or the, you know, the, here's Andy Warhol. You know, they're all trying to find money and uh, and be viable, and because they have enormous rents to pay, mm. and few people are going to take a chance, especially the small galleries, because <laughs> they really can't afford the rent. <laughs> yeah. So so stuckism rules. Every, I mean, I love I love everything it says the, the precepts to you know. Mm. And, and that 2013, to answer your question. Yes. <laughs> when I heard about stuckism. Mm. But I, that's what I liked about stuckism as well. Like I say, the, the unnecessary, the middleman who's going to do nothing but take you off course. It just seemed to be, and it's kind of funny because I'm quite into um, Bitcoin as well, which is a, a, obviously this massive phenomenon that's, that's taken off, almost as a, a, as a, almost like an ultra communist ideology. The fact is, if I want to give Ron Throop some money, I don't. I don't need a bank. I, I'll just. I'll send. I'll send a hundred million dollars to Tokyo at two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. You know that 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 kind of. We don't need this kind of constant validation of every step we take, and right. that's what I liked about stuckism. This thing where if you want to do a painting, you pick up a paintbrush and do a painting. If you want to do an exhibition, you put your picture on a wall and you invite some people to come and see it. It's 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 so, totally self centric, which again mm -hmm. might sound egotistical, but who cares if it's the right way to do it? It's the right way to do it. You can call call it whatever you like, and I, that's what mm -hmm. I liked about stuckism. And there's a typical old saying: if you want something done properly, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just so true. Every show I've been to of people whose work I know is not a patch on how look it, how good it looks in their studio or in their home like when when billy does a show yeah they're good paintings but you're, you're better off going to a studio and just looking at, at your work there behind you now i i just mm -hmm. want to sort of step into the computer and have a look around mm -hmm. and i want to mm -hmm. you know yeah, there's half a painting in the background i just want to have a look i i don't get that with a gallery or and all these kind of like you say these pedestals which i think the younger generation are now just been programmed to just respond to are actually all counterproductive uh -huh. and, and with artists like yourself um, Charles Emma and, and whoever I, I just see a real kind of purity in what in what you're doing that, that I, I just think that that will just feed back into me and my work um, good good it should because here in the in the states it's it's really bad it's a wash with with just people knowing the game now so they a lot of people play it, and the big thing here are grants, grants, grants. Yeah, and and they're all in CVs, you know, you know, uh, resumes. Yeah, you know, anytime a, a gallery is asking for a CV, they, 
that's no gallery I want to be in. I, I, yeah. I don't want to show you what I what I did. Like, am I worth it? Am I worth the investment? Uh, mm. If you don't have eyes, then I, I, I can't help you. you know? That's it. Yeah. With the rare time somebody pops in, um, I had a, there was a gallery down in Watkins Glen, and this is interesting because it, it uh, includes suckism. They they drove up here because they saw my work online and they wanted to see my studio. They asked me, "Can I come into your house and, and look?" and and they were gallerists, mm. uh, and they looked and they said, "Can you please can you please have a show?" And I said, "Yeah, can I make it a group show?" Because I was talking with Charles back and forth at the time, and I said I can bring a bunch of stuckists from all around the world, and we got and we got thirty seven no thirty six painters from mm. nine, living in nine countries in this little tiny community of Watkins Glen with Charles's help, sure. pretty much so. Yeah. And, uh, because I wouldn't have been able to petition <laughs> these folks to go with that back for you, right? Yeah. And uh, um, anyway, so uh, yeah, eliminate that. That that was one time where the middleman was actually very helpful, and mm. uh, and because they because they had vision, and uh, and and they can see when somebody's prolific and has something to show. So, it, it, but the young, like I said, the younger. Right now we have going around uh, uh, the country. I don't know if you have this there. It's a Van Gogh exhibit, or Van Gogh, Van Gogh exhibit. Yeah. And uh, it's not an exhibit. It's like a, a visual video presentation with 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 all of this you know painting. It's like a psychedelic weird thing you go sit in in a room and it circles around you and go, oh my god, <laughs> they're destroying everything. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. It's, it's such a lack of it's such a lack of confidence in the thing you're supposed to be elevating to do to do that. Um, it's like Van Gogh's a brilliant yeah, Van Gogh's a brilliant painter, but his paintings aren't good enough. We have to we have right. to help him out a bit. Well, <laughs> it's, probably couldn't get his paintings. They can get access to the digital rights for the show, and that's why they did it, so they can just make these videos. I don't know. Yeah. Well, your your work. Um, it looks fantastic. Um, when I when I put them on the wall, that they, they just it, the, the, it's, it's self curating. I, I don't plan where these pictures are going to go. I just put nails in the wall. They go up and that's and how I, I that's how I do it. When yeah. I, any 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 show, even someone else's. If I have a friend who I'm showing in my house, I I just wing it. Thank yeah. you though. Know, that's that's kind. No 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 problem. Um, I should probably wrap up. Is there anything you wanted to say? Um, in this video that I haven't sort of prompted you to talk about? No, um, no, I, I, I don't think so. I really thank you for even offering. And uh, I told you I was going to have a debate about getting the, uh, uh, you got to give me your uh, PayPal or Venmo. So oh, don't worry. Um, that, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'm like, uh, uh, it's no problem. Would you like a quick, uh, can I walk your, if I, can I make a non-verbal walk around the studio so you can see the basement where I work? I should have asked you to do that. That's a brilliant idea. Okay. Uh, see if it works. Just you tell me. If, just uh, I want to hear because I can't see you. So just let me know if you're seeing stuff. Okay, I'll keep quiet unless I need to. So um, yeah. So I'm looking outside my window. So a lot of paintings are stacked up, and uh, so if you know anybody in New York State who needs some wall hangings, and then boxes of paintings here, and uh, some uh, my friends, some Russians sent some paintings. I have them down here until I can put them back upstairs. Was that space created to be an art studio? No, this is our basement, and uh, no, I, I'm, I did it, cleaned it, cleaned it out, and I, I, and I fear, I fear flood. I mean, really fear flood, because when I, when the rains come, yeah, there's a bunch stacked back going back here. This was a a wine bar I made, where I actually made the wines. And uh, and then you know made the labels for the bottles. It was a lot of fun. How much? How many years work would you say you've got down there? Um. Well, yeah, probably. 
I don't know. I, we moved here in 2011, so let's, even though I was really just during 2011 doing a lot of paper paintings. So, yeah, 10 years, 10 years. But I'm fortunate, I do get to sell some work. So, it's, it's a... Mm. But when I say sell, I make very little. I probably sell 20 paintings a year, and, and you know my pricing is, 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 uh, is kind of low. Yeah, and I have a I have a method of pricing that I had a show last year called How to Price a Painting, and um, for me anyway, and I and I thought it was kind of cool because there's a music box I made a, a record player, so you open it up. Can you see that? Mm, yeah. In the can you see the really so you put your album album art there and. <laughs> stuff like that but I came up with this uh, so my friend the other day he saw the empty uh, the empty uh, uh, canvas and he said paint a corpse on that and I said okay and I couldn't paint a corpse so I just started to draw make a corpse which is there, me and then I had to throw rose in there too so <laughs> I guess if I, I'm not gonna I don't want to take your time so thank you very much thank you Ron